great deal of momentum in independent games right now. There are a lot of people working on interesting projects. It's easier to make a game than it ever has been in video game history. And it's easier to get people to see your game than it ever has been, right? There's all kinds of distribution methods. So, yeah, I mean, I just hope it lasts. You know, history changes very rapidly. You never know where things are going to go. However, when people would ask me this kind of question in 2008 when Braid was first released, I would say, this is a great time. It'll probably go away by around 2010. And that hasn't happened. So my pessimism was unwarranted, but it'll happen eventually. It's just when. The question is when. I'm Jonathan Blow. My uh, company that I work with is Tecla Incorporated. Working on a game called The Witness. It's a 3D puzzle exploration game. Still lots of things to decide. Like, does, does this line have the ability to cross itself? Right? Or is it more solid? Can it run into itself? And what are the consequences of each of those things? So here's what it sort of feels like. I can cross through myself, and I can go around, and I can even just trace over myself. Now I'm circling this block multiple times, and it's like, geez, does it matter that I circled that multiple times? Is that different than just going around it one time? Right? And if it is, then don't I need to figure out a way to visually register that difference? Because what you saw there, you couldn't tell how many times I'd circled that block. And so early on thinking about this, I was like, that's a big mess. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't please me, right, aesthetically. So I'm going to go this way. Uh, it's going to be a solid line. It bumps into itself. You can't ever cross yourself. Um, you know, not at corners, not at long edges or anything. Um, you trace to the end and you solve. I sort of started it as an independent, like just me working on it prototype kind of a thing in August 2008. We started it for real with a, with a real team in uh, October 2009. Well, we've got three of us who are uh, full-time employees, and then there's a bunch of other people working on the game in other capacities. So there's a, there's a contractor working on audio. Um, there's a contractor doing system administration kind of things. Uh, there's been at various times like concept artists on it. Right now there's architects working on it, so we have two structural architects and two landscape architects. They don't work for the company, right? They're separate firms that we're working with, but they're basically doing this project as their thing right now. I don't like to think about it, because that's, you know, you, you, you spend too much time thinking about the organization of making the game and you don't spend enough time about thinking about the actual game and that's very damaging, right? I really spend very little time imagining ideas separate from trying them out, right? So I think it's very important if you're a game designer to be able to program so that you can just sit down and make your idea happen and see how it is and see if it works the way you thought or not, right? So I'm doing that a lot of the time. But usually what happens on a big project is that your ability to try things out does not keep pace with the ideas that come in, right? So you build up a backlog. Um, so it's really being disciplined and chewing through that backlog as fast as you can. I, I have a lot of ideas. I mean, I have a file where I type in my game ideas. There's 95 things in there right now I went through and counted. Um, any of which would be good. Some of them are probably better than others. So right now the issue is we only have two programmers. I'm one of them. I'm also uh, doing uh, doing the game design and running the company and all that. We actually have another guy who's doing some porting kind of programming, but it's not engine programming, right? Um, and he's part time, so it's whatever. Uh, we have a limited capacity to launch the game on a number of platforms. So if that remains true, my hope is uh, we can launch on the PC, maybe port to iOS briefly after that, and that'll be sort of a good launch. And then maybe we can go look at consoles and stuff, because they're a lot of work, especially because, uh, you know, they were made in 2005 or whatever, and a typical person's PC now is a lot newer than that. A typical person who buys a game on Steam has much higher end graphics than that and, and all that. So it makes it easier on us. It's less work for us to target the PC now. Uh, that used to be reversed, right? Like years ago, it was easier to target a platform that's fixed, like a console, and, and the capabilities were roughly the same. So that's turned around. Um, now we're looking at hiring more programmers. And if we 
we do that, then a, a more of a multi-platform launch becomes feasible. Well, this new game is a very expensive game. I would like to make all the money back, right? Um, at least. I mean, I would love it to be very profitable, and then I can make a couple of games next time at the same time or whatever. But um, I'm not going to change what the game is in order to make it more marketable. Part of what makes it special is that it's very different from what a lot of other people are making. And part of what makes it different is that it's not a commercial effort in the same way. And I don't want to lose that, right? It's definitely a very uh, heartfelt, sincere, straightforward game that is not... It's about giving something to players rather than taking money out of their pockets, right? And it, if that ever changes, then I will stop making games because I need to be able to do that.